today we are going to talk about Room. So we ask people to write offline ready applications. We want your application to work without a network connection. But if you don't have a proper model inside your application, it's pretty much impossible to write a good offline experience. So for that reason, you do need a database. Luckily, on Android, we have SQLite. And SQLite is a really, really awesome technology. It's very fast. And when you need to optimize it for your use case, it's very easy to do so. It's a very powerful query language. You can express many different things and make it concise and easily grab the data. It's the biggest advantage compared to other object stores or key value stores. And SQLite also scales very well. I mean, for an application, you probably won't have much data, but you can have multiple gigabytes of data, and SQLite will be just fine. And there's companies using it on the back end. So for your like, scalability data size needs, SQLite will be perfect. Now, SQLite on Android was not that cool. Uh, you need to write out of boilerplate code to convert between your Java and Kotlin objects and your SQLite. Uh, there is no compile time safety. So if you are building an SQL query and you forget like a one comma if case, you're going to get a runtime crash. And it's very hard to test all those cases. Uh, you can also cannot observe what has changed. Now, we want people to write reactive applications or reactive UIs. And if you cannot observe your data model, it's kind of hard. You have to build it yourself. Uh, so we build it for you. So like around two years ago, we ship room, we introduced the compile time safety, we introduced observability, and we introduced a strong ID integration. As you can notice with like with room, with navigation, this is a big thing for us. We want to develop libraries together with Android Studio to provide a nice user experience. Then this year's IO, we introduced right ahead logging, which speed up SQLite a lot. And we also introduced support for paging so that you can have very large data sets, queries, and you can easily load them into a recycler view. 2.0 release is just our conversion from Android support to Android X. And we kept it the same as 1.1 so that you can have an easy migration. And 2.1 is what we're going to talk about today. And this is actually kind of the actual 2.0. Uh, it's a very large release. We have like full text search, views, multi-instance validation, auto value, and more Rx stuff. So let's talk about them. Sweet. One of the pretty cool new features we added in 2.1, it's full text search, or FTS. And FTS is basically a way to index text documents and make them searchable. Let's take, a look. Let's take a look at an example. Imagine we have a music app, and we want to add search functionality to it. You know, you have a search box, you want to type something, and you want to be able to find songs uh, within that music app. If we have room, you know, we express, we store this song data in a table. That's an entity. Um, Conveniently, we have our label as an embedded object. And our song labels, you know, what's the song name, the album name, and artist name, this is kind of like what we want to search and make the index. If we were to do this without FTS right now, you know, we need to write a query. Um, and basically, you have to use the like operator. Um, this is not very good. It's very limited. That Percentage sign is kind of like a wild card. And this basically causes a full table scan. Yeah, like even if you index that query column in the database, SQLite will not be able to use that index because the index only works if you are doing a prefix search, uh, which is not what you want to do here. Yeah, so don't do this. Um, <laughs> moreover, if you try to actually search across album on artists, you have to expand this query. And this, as you can see, doesn't doesn't easily scale. FTS helps us with this situation because it, create, it now creates a virtual table, and all the, all the columns are indexed. And to use FTS, you just now annotate your entity with at FTS. Now in your query, instead of using like, you would use match, which is a different operator. And as you can see here, we use where song. So we're using the same table name uh, as our column in our where statement. And that basically tells the match operation that you want to search across all those labels. So this helps us with searching across artists and album if you have an omnibus. Uh, 
you might say, oh, then I can use FTS on all of my tables if I have any string, but not quite. So using FTS uh, consumes more disk space. And the reason is because when you create an FTS table, you actually create a virtual table. And that's backed by a few tables where your content is and a lot of the indexing information. This is known as shadow tables. When you actually query from your virtual table, the information actually comes from these tables. There's also a few drawbacks also to FTS. Uh, you cannot have foreign keys on your entity or, com or compose primary keys. Um, but there's one pretty neat feature, which is external content. Um, let's, going back to our song entity, if we wanted to instead use our real table and create a second table for only our labels, we just basically use that FTS annotation, but we tell it, hey, my data is actually going to be stored in this other real table that I already have. Um, conveniently, this new data class and new virtual table only has the labels. So in the previous example, everything was indexed. So even the URL, which is not quite what we wanted to index. In this case, we only have the labels. What happens now is we have a virtual table in front of it that's on FTS, and behind it, it has the same shadow tables for the indexing, but it, the actual content is stored in the original SOM table that we had. This is way better. Um, in saving this space, and it's a little bit more flexible. To query this external content, this FTS table with external content, you do have to query from the virtual table, and then you would do a join because we want to get the songs, and then similarly, you would still use match. One thing, though, is that because these are two different tables, when you insert into the song table, things are not actually inserted into the virtual table, FTS table, which means your indexes doesn't get updated, so you have to do that yourself. But you know, we don't want you doing this. Uh, we might gonna, we wanna make it easy. So when you use Room, Room will actually create triggers for you to keep these two things in sync. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Right. Uh, another important feature we have added is support for database views. <clears throat> so. Let's go back to our song and album example. We have songs and we have albums, and a song might be in multiple albums, so we have a junction table that associates the songs with the albums. Uh, now, this is so cool, so let's say you want to fetch a listing, right? You want to have the album name and all the songs in it as a list. Uh, okay, cool, we just write a, we have the listing class, and we write a query and fetch from that junction table. Unfortunately, you cannot do this because that table doesn't have the song's name or the album's title. You kind of need to write a query like this, where you fetch from that table and join it with the song and album table, and then you can return your listing data. Now, this is actually cool. SQLite is powerful that you can express this, but if you find yourself keep writing these things, it's kind of like lots of boilerplate, like things you need to keep in your mind. Wouldn't it be cool if you could just have a table that has the song and the album together without you duplicating the data into that table and the songs and the album tables? And this is where database views come into place. So you basically write the query that defines album and song together as a query. Uh, you annotate an entity with a database view. So you're saying that this is like a view to this database. Uh, and in that POJO, this is the same room rule. So you can have any POJO with the embedded fields or whatnot. Uh, once you declare it and uh, add it to your room database, uh, so we have that declaration. If you try to rewrite the previous query, you can just get rid of all the join and instead select from that table. Well, we are selecting from a view that table doesn't exist. But for the all intents and purposes of querying, that's a table. Uh, and now it's much, much more simpler. Because I say it's like a table, you can also return that POJO. Or you can even return a live data. Because we know how that view is constructed, we know when the value might change. So you can get a live data of it. You can run queries. Like you can pretty much do everything you can do with a table, except you cannot do inserts and updates, because there is no backing data. But you can have views inside other views. Like All that stuff works. So this makes it much nicer to write queries, and it also allows you to logically uh, address your data. Another important feature we have added is support for multiple instances. 
So let's say we are writing the application, so we have a playlist, all the songs, and we have a sync service that goes to our backend, pulls the new updates for my playlist, and writes them into a database. When you are using Room, if the sync service updates the database, it automatically updates the UI. And this is a super cool feature because you write these two components absolutely independent of each other. They don't know about each other. They have the database as a sync point. This works perfectly, but then your startup is successful. You grow your team. Your application is bloated. So you decide to move that synchronization into a background process. Now, when it's running in a different process, it pulls the song, writes it into the database, and your UI has no idea. It doesn't know the database has changed because it only knows that database has changed if the same room instance is the one making the update. So we can fake it because we don't get that information from SQLite. That's something room tracks. Uh, now, with room 2.1, you can enable multi instance invalidation when you build the room instance, uh, which, will look, which will look for other instances of room that are accessing the same database. Once you do that, now your background process service can update the database, and all instances of Room will update automatically. Now, we don't do this. This, this is off by default, because we need to create a service. There's some IPC involved. It's not a big cost, but it is a cost that most people don't need. So you need to enable this flag to take advantage of this feature. Another feature we added, which was actually requested by the community, was auto value support. You know, if you're using Kotlin, you don't have to worry about this because you have data classes. But if you're still in Java world, then you might want to have, you might be using auto value because you want Java immutable objects. Well, Room now can understand these auto value annotated objects. Um, if, you, if, you rem if you know a little bit about auto value, you basically have an abstract class and you annotate it with auto value. But now you can also annotate that same abstract class with app entity, and Room will be able to discover that you want to make a backing SQLite table for it. In auto value, instead of having fields, you have abstract getters. These can now be annotated with room annotations to declare primary key, column information, and things like that. The only caveat, though, is that you do have to also add auto values copy annotation. And this is, uh, this is the annotation that basically makes these two tools work together. By the way, to support this, so normally these annotations were only limited to fields. And we needed to extend it to let you put them on those abstract methods. But it only works if you're using auto value. If you're not using auto value, we are not going to let it compile. Yep. Similarly, if you were writing a normal data class, you would have a constructor with the fields. In audio value world, you still need that factory method. And Rule will be able to discover this to create your auto value class. Um, and then using it is you would use it as any other data class. You would use the abstract class that you declare. Another highly requested feature <laughs> that has been working for we decided that has been requested for a while and we finally got it is you know, more Rx. So now you can actually have a sync return types completable single and maybe in methods annotated with insert, update, and delete. So you know we listen. When you when you request stuff, you know, we'll listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this is actually uh, yeah, it's only available in Rx. That's interesting. Might be available in other, other type of async. Like coroutines, Kotlin's? Maybe, Ooh, maybe. Yeah, please. Uh, so, so Room 2.1 is a really big release, like the full text search, the database views. And when we <clears throat> decided which features to work on, we are basically relying on your feedback. Like these are literally, like I, I personally objected that allowing completely land stuff in those like insert queries for a long time. And I gave up because people really wanted it. And this is our development philosophy. We basically look at what the community is doing, how are they using it, what do they want, and implement them. Uh, so please like, try to use 2.1. It's a very big release. And we want to just like, uh, ship it as stable as soon as possible. And we need your feedback. We basically look at the number of apps shipping with Room and see how they are using. We we'll look for the incoming bugs. I mean, we don't really have bugs, but sometimes no use, bugs, look no for bugs. incoming user errors, uh, <laughs> try to fix them. And now we try to shift. So uh, please work with us, 
and we'll try to wrap it up and ship it. And also, please let us know what other features you want in Room so that we can implement them. All right, thanks a lot for coming to this talk. I hope it was useful. Thank you. Thank you.